ambient sound. Control for Hague emergency. Respond to the Hague Beach off 9N for a 28-year-old male, possible overdose. Breathing is not confirmed. Party 1 ALS. Fire Control 304. precautions on this patient so I'm going to go ahead and do the head tilt chin lift. I have my oral airway that I want to measure from the tip of the earlobe to the corner of the mouth. After I have that inserted I have the appropriate size BVM. I get a good seal and I want to hyperventilate the patient. Now I also have this patient attached to pulse oximetry and I'm seeing it at 85%. So I really want to get this patient on high flow O2. So I'll take the end, hook it on to the oxygen unit, turn it up to 15 liters, and I can continue with my ventilations. Now I can continue at once every five to six seconds. So at this point I have contacted medical control and they have ordered intubation. So I want to go ahead and get my handy dandy rescuer here to take over ventilation. He'll continue at once every five to six seconds. And so this is a perfect time to check my equipment. So I'm looking at my laryngoscope, making sure that the batteries are good, making sure that the light is tight and bright. It's not going to come off. Looks good. I like the Mac blade. It's the curved blade. This blade is placed anterior to the epiglottis. If you have the Miller blade, which is the straight blade, you place that posterior to the epiglottis. So that's all set. I have my tube. I want to put in the stylet. I bent the end. Um, also bent this end so that the tip doesn't extend beyond the tube. Also want to check the bulb by inflating it. Make sure that I'm not seeing it leaking anywhere, that it stays inflated so it looks good. So I want to make sure I get all that air out. And I can go ahead and leave this open and so it's ready. So as soon as Tom is ready, we can go ahead and start the process. I'm going to hyperextend as I'm going in. I'm sweeping to the left to move that tongue out of the way. I'm visually seeing it going through the epiglottis. Moving the stylet, I want to pump up that tube, do my check. If it comes out, perfect. I'm not in the esophagus. So as we give the first breath, I'm listening in the epigastrum and bilaterally on the lungs. If I'm hearing sounds in the lungs, great. Not hearing sounds in the epigastrum, even better. So. At this point, I want to take my color metric device and attach it. Now, because we're intubated, we're going to be going at a little slower Mom. rate. He's going to be ventilating once every 7 to 10 seconds. So, I'm still holding on to the tube, Mom. so we want to get this tube secure. You can use tape, or we have a commercial device here. So we'll go ahead and use this. Um. It just tightens around the um. tube. And the great thing about this is I can look 
and I am seeing me at the 25 mark um. on the tube. And I want to remember that because if I see that it has moved, I'll be concerned that the tube um. has, has moved. So once that is secure, we um. can go ahead and put on a collar. And when we transport him, make sure we transport on a backboard. Now once we're um. in the rig, my region requires waveform capnography. So we have a filter line set um. to allow us to see waveform capnography. Good. Um. So I can detach the color metric and continue ventilations as normal. And this little orange um. thing sticks into the monitor and allows me to see waveform capnography. So throughout the transport, you know, you're definitely going to re-listen to the lungs, re-listen to the epigastrum to make sure that the tube hasn't moved. And I'm also noticing my mark hasn't moved. So I'm also seeing secretions in the tube. <gasps> so we want to think about suction. I opened up my suction catheter and I want to measure the appropriate size. Going from the tin, from the chin, to the mm -hmm. tip of the sternum. I'm not going to move my fingers. I know the appropriate depth. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my suction unit. And since he just gave a breath, I'll go ahead and stick it in. And I want to suction coming out no longer than 15 seconds. So after I've suctioned, I want to make sure this is flushed with normal saline because it'd be nice for this to be ready if I need to use it again. And that is intubation. Ha ha, very funny, Tom. Better based lubricant. You want to make sure that your patient has good lubrication because if they don't, <laughs> nope, you're right. No, it's, right. It's upside down. That's because you're standing in the way. Oh. <laughs> so wait, if I move like this, it flips it. No, wait. I can only do it in my left hand. Oh, <laughs>